super special episode, everyone. This episode was recorded in Tim's kitchen, wasn't it, Tim? Oh, it was, yes. In the shadow of your mighty coffee machine, no doubt. Oh, yes, it did cast quite a shadow, it does. <laughs> <laughs> we had to put an additional lighting in from different angles. So we can see what we're doing. Well, and speaking of lighting, lots of pictures were taken during this recording. So we will flash them up on the screen at all the relevant times on the YouTube version of this podcast. And also there will be a link in the show notes if you want to go and look at a photo gallery. And throughout this episode, we will be stopping intermittently so you can hear from Tim and I with a bit of director's commentary i wasn't there but i'll be talking to tim at various stages throughout the episode so keep listening for little uh, interjections and special moments from us this is i feel a sense of anticipation about this it's massive yes it is it's, we've been talking about this for a little while so with no further ado let's uh let's go live to tim's kitchen <laughs> all right here we are ground zero the Hind Kitchen, where we are going to be doing something highly significant tonight and very, very special. Well, I'm on a KFC fast throughout this whole year, but tonight, because there has been a significant leak of the Colonel's secret recipe, we have managed to get a copy and have gathered the ingredients and we are going to do, well, I'm going to do the Hind version. I say we because I'm joined tonight by a little helper. What do you want to be known as, little helper? Miss... Miss Colonel, maybe that'll work well. Miss Colonel, that sounds good. I'm getting the nod of approval. We have all the ingredients laid out before us. We have 11 herbs and spices, plus salt. Mm -hmm. uh, we have some flour. We have an Exxon Valdez level of oil <laughs> here in front of us. Uh, we have a pot and pan. And most importantly, of course, I remembered to buy chicken at the last minute. I thought, yes, there's one more thing we need. We need some chicken. So I have a selection of chicken pieces. Everything's ready to go. This is gonna be exciting. First step is, and it's always step one on every cooking show, is you need to get out a good mixing bowl. So, I'm gonna reach down here. We've got a good selection of mixing bowls. Come on, Miss Colonel, which one are you gonna choose there? Do we need a, it doesn't need to be too big, but it needs to be, I think that's a good one. Nice white one there that's wide enough. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in here, the flour and all the ingredients, and we are going to roll them around. But we need to do something else as well, actually. We need to soak the chicken pieces in buttermilk, so I think we actually might need to have two mixing bowls. I'd like to see Jamie Oliver with two mixing bowls. Okay, step number one, two cups of plain flour. Here we go. Now we need one of those little cup cups as a kid, I always noted that a cup was never the same as a cup, was it? Like there was a cup that we drank coffee in and then there was a, an official cup. And an official cup, that looks, is that a cup? Now in one of the recipes I heard online from someone who'd actually worked at KFC and they thought um, maybe the flour was a bit thinner because obviously it came from the secret central quarters, but we're going to use plain flour because that's what was in the Colonel's recipe in his own hand. Nice, the first cup of flour has gone in. The second cup is being prepared. Right, that's two cups of flour and some spillage on the bench. There we go. Well done. Good work to my beautiful assistant who's getting into the spirit of mess equivalent to her father. So, DIY KFC yes. on the menu at the Hein House. <laughs> indeed, indeed. So, obviously, we have gotten hold of this leaked KFC recipe that's been doing the rounds lately. It's not the first time such a thing has been doing the rounds, but lots and lots of civilians have been in touch yes. about it. Mm. And the, and the clamour for Tim to cook this was, was so great that I started leaning on Tim pretty heavily and basically bullied him into doing it. It's the first time I've been bullied um, in relation to engaging with KFC in my life. I'm generally yeah. quite <laughs> easily led to that particular trough. Which leads to the big question, what does this mean for your KFC fast? Because Tim famously is taking the year off eating KFC. He's on a year-long self-flagellation of not eating KFC. Does this 
this not bring this into question? I don't think it counts. I think the only way that this would count is if I am able to create it with such perfection that I go, oh, hello. If I feel guilty at the end, then I know I've hit the recipe perfectly. So <laughs> I sort of felt like, I felt like then, then that's, you know, that's, that's the win. Um, so I right. felt like it doesn't count if it falls at all short of the perfection that I yeah. expect from at least some of the better KFC outlets. So because you haven't purchased it from a KFC outlet, you feel like you get a bit of a pass here. I do. I do. I think it doesn't count. Mm. I think it's my, it's a, it, I mean, it's a homage, isn't it? Like to, to mm. KFC. So it, it's not actually KFC. Like if I, if I was to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to see U2 all year. And then I went and saw a U2 cover band. I didn't see U2, right. did I? Right. <laughs> So this is so you, this is you basically doing some cover KFC. It is. Yes, this is like this is the culinary version of a cover band. That's exactly right. Okay. And to give people a bit more context, how proficient a cook are you normally? My understanding is that you're not really the main cook in the house. Well, I'd be in the top 4 in the house. <laughs> So you're outside your comfort zone. I oh, indeed. Yeah, I'm not. Co- it's not that I'm uncomfortable cooking. I I just I don't do a lot of it, and I I have other responsibilities. I should add in the house, like eating. Well, that's right. Indeed, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I uh, I don't do most of the cooking, and and of course my wife is a fantastic cook, and uh, one of my girls in particular is a great cook too. Real emerging cook. So I think I'd be at third, maybe fourth on the list. Certainly competing for okay. bronze. Yes. <laughs> okay. At least you're above the dog. Well, that's right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's go back to the kitchen. All right. Now we've got the flour. So we start with the recipe. The first of the 11 secret herbs and spices to be revealed here live on the Unmade podcast. Number one, top of the list two-thirds of a teaspoon of salt. Do we have a two-thirds teaspoon or do we just have to measure two-thirds of a teaspoon? What's that? That's a teaspoon. So two-thirds of one of these of salt. All right, we've only got rock salt, so we have to grind it. You got that? Looking forward to that salt already. Good work. All right, now we've hit upon an issue here. The recipe that I'm looking at says TS. This is in the handwriting found in the notebook, allegedly in the Colonel's own hand. TS, capital TS. Now, is that tablespoon or teaspoon? What was sent by Brady sent to me said teaspoon. But I'm looking at another story where someone is actually reporting it as tablespoon. Ah, geez, this is a big deal. Maybe that's the secret. The actual herbs and spices aren't a secret. What's a secret is whether it's tablespoons or teaspoons of the 11 herbs and spices. Ah, this is really frustrating. Is it tablespoon or teaspoon? There's a big difference, you know. There's like three teaspoons in every tablespoon. All right, I've done a bit of further reading. Other people have been very confused about this, but we're going to go with tablespoon because in a battle between... Subtle taste or strong taste? I reckon let's go with the strong taste. Why would you have a tiny little teaspoon amount in there with two cups? No, it's got to be tablespoon. We're going with tablespoon. Are you comfortable with that? I'm getting a big nod here from Miss Colonel. So we're going to move to tablespoon. Okay, so we're going to have to measure this out. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? I think it's three. So in this one, we need two thirds of a tablespoon of salt. So that's perfect. We need two teaspoons, that means. So here we go. Let's start off with some salt. First ingredient, in with the flour. Let's go. Oh, geez, I can see it coming together already. All right, now, moving on to secret ingredient number two. We have half a tablespoon of thyme. It's time for the thyme. We've got this in a nice little packet here. Let's open that up. Oh, half a tablespoon. So that's one and a half teaspoons. Herb number two. What time is time a herb or a spice? I think it's a herb. I have no idea actually. All right, moving on to secret herb and spice number three, basil. We need half a tablespoon of basil. So that's one and a half teaspoons of basil. 
Yeah, this is making more sense. Look at the amounts amongst all that flour. I think it's tablespoons. All right, we're moving on to herb and spice number four, which is a one third of a tablespoon of oregano. So that's one teaspoon, in other words, of oregano. Now, what does that oregano look like? Where's that? There we go. We need one teaspoon of that. And I've had a different Miss Sanders subbed in, Miss Sanders number two. <laughs> Welcome to the kitchen for the first time today. That's it, take the lid off. Scoop it out, nice. There we go, good work. Actually, while you're doing that, I'm realizing that we want to be soaking the chicken pieces in buttermilk. I don't know if we do that for a long time or just a little while. Okay, let's put the buttermilk in and let that happen. What's the difference between buttermilk and normal milk, I wonder? Butter, I guess it's just thicker with more butter. All right, we need the chicken pieces. All right, let's open up the chicken. Oh. Not open up the chicken, open up the packaging in which the chicken came. Now, what I've done is I've got a whole selection of different pieces. Like I've got a whole selection here of legs and then we've got a whole selection of wings. Actually, that's it. So it's not really a great selection. It's just wings and legs, but I'm not a big one on wings, I have to say, with KFC. They used to be my dad's favourite, but I'm not big on them. I find them finicky and not satisfying. I always start with a leg, I have to say. The very best place to start. <laughs> All right, let's get some of these in there, the wings. All right, now I'm putting in some wings. It's kind of sloppy, isn't it, this buttermilk? I don't know if we're going to fit it all in there, but we'll cram it all in there, let it slip. All right, so we'll let them soak there for a while. I'm doing a lot of hand washing. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of hand washing. I, they, I like they like one ingredient getting mixed in with the other stuff. And I love a paper towel clean, drying the hand. Now put it in the compost. Oh yeah, yeah, no they do, don't they? If it grows, it goes. Good reminder. <laughs> okay, Tim. Mm. Here begins one of the great issues of this episode. Tablespoon versus teaspoon. Unresolvable in one sense. Certainly at this point, I, I really am at a loss and no amount of Googling mm. is helping at all. Mm. So I got texts. I got texts. And you didn't follow my advice. No, no. Because the, your problem was you had, it, it was it was TS is what was written on this handwritten leaked recipe. Mm. And you didn't know whether, to, whether that meant teaspoons or tablespoons. Yes. I thought that must mean teaspoons because TB I thought would be tablespoons. And I told you as much. Mm. But you've opted for the tablespoon at this stage. Yes, because although I have a considerable amount of experience with spoons, as you know, mm. I yes. um, really did feel like the teaspoon was going to be too small. But mm. th this reveals something else, is that I have no idea really what these herbs and spices do or what their power is or what their taste is. I mean, I really, I mean, yeah. I wouldn't know. If you say describe oregano, I'd go, I don't know. Describe thyme, I'd go, well, oh, I don't know. I mean, like, cinnamon, sure. Mm. Yep, cinnamon, salt, yep. yes. Yep, salt, no, no, salt. They'd be, they'd be in there. I mean, I can distinguish yeah. salt and pe pepper. I can, um, mm. I can, Ooh, I can classy. add cinnamon. Yeah, that's right. Every now and then, I can use some all season stuff on top of my toasty toasty. But I, I don't know the difference. This is, this is, uh, this is why I'm a terrible cook. I don't know the difference in yeah. the different tastes. I know that you should add some, but not all of them, to different flavors. But it does feel like that most recipes to me involve sort of a combination of pretty much the same stuff. So I don't know. Hmm. But of course they don't. That dramatically influences the taste, and people are, I'm sure, rolling wow. in there. Rolling their eyes at the moment, but and it seems like you've gone the tablespoon just out of a sort of a slight greediness, maybe. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, surely you want a lot of it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's all. That's all. That's all. I think. Yeah. It comes down to it's like, well, why would you have a little bit? You'd have a lot, surely. Exactly. Like I always like to say, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly bear. Nicely said. Beautifully said. Yeah. Yes. Lovely. Yeah. And do you want to give us any more detail on what buttermilk is? Buttermilk is. Um, really buttery kind of milk, isn't it? Like it's. <laughs> How does the milk become buttery? I don't know this either. Well, doesn't I thought when you churn milk enough, like if you just sat there and stirred milk for about four days, it'd turn it. Doesn't it turn into butter, or does it turn into yogurt? No, no, it's butter. Yogurt needs to be cultured in that. I think you're right, churning it. Yeah. But what does that mean? Butter milk has just been slightly churned, or do they take some other butter and put it into the milk? 
I don't well, know. Well, then, because it's not like it's butter with – it's not milk with bits of butter floating around in it. No. So it, it either tur- all turns to butter, which means it would be thick, like a thick shake. You know what I mean? Halfway to butter, halfway to a solid. Could you drink a thick shake of butter? Like a whole glass of butter? <laughs> I could sip it. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Butter is nice. <laughs> I do love butter. Who, when you're buttering your bread, do you sometimes just knife off a little bit of butter and put it straight in your mouth? I, when the, when whatever is left on the knife goes onto the finger and then on into the mouth every single oh, time. Oh, classy. Not not straight into the mouth because that would be uncouth. Well, that no, indeed, that's right. And I might cut my tongue mm. off. So that's mm. that's a lesson you learn. <laughs> <laughs> First time you do it. So I do. I love we, we use real butter at home as well, not margarine. So and I just love it. It's so great. Do you keep it out so that it's soft or do you put it in the fridge? We keep it out in a nice little glass sort of container, oh. you know, a little rectangle. Yeah. Um, you are classy. You're a classy bunch in your house. You know how you're supposed to have you know these things, it's like a tray and then there's like a deep bit that goes on top. So actually the lid, yeah, no. you know, the butter like sits a bu- on Yeah, a butter dish. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. We actually use our butter dish upside down because it doesn't have a handle. And what we find is it's a lot easier to um, have the butter scooped into the scoop, in, into the deep cavernous part. So we have that on its back mm. and then we have the flat part as the little cap lid on top. So strictly speaking, we, we use our butter upside down. That's how things roll in the Southern Hemisphere, people. That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Otherwise, it just flies up to the roof. So we have to, like, put yeah. it down that way. <laughs> That's how things work down here, down under. All right. It's time for part three. We're back to Tim's kitchen and a special, special guest is about to arrive. But I will say no more. <laughs> All right. Now that chicken's sitting there in the buttermilk. Let's get back to the herbs and spices. Now, I think the last one we did was oregano. Is that right? Okay. Now we're on to something called celery salt. That's one tablespoon of celery salt. Well, we're going to do three teaspoons, you see. That was a whole massive situation before. So we need three of those. There's one, two, three. There we go. Celery salt. I have no idea what celery salt is. All right. Now, next one is one tablespoon of black pepper. Now, I assume black pepper is just like another name for pepper. So what we need to do, hang on, we need to capture that somehow because we've got it in the canister. Or do we have black pepper? They must be here somewhere because we put them in the pepper thing. Where are they kept? Is that them or is that sultanas? They're sultanas. (laughs) I'm just going to put in whatever my hand comes across. What's this? Coconut sugar. No, I don't think that's a good idea. All right, we'll just push it out of that into, we'll put it into the crusher thing because that's a good thing to capture things in and there's just a little bit of salt in there. Oh you can pull them out. Oh you've taken the lid off. (laughs) You're a genius. Oh that's awesome. (laughs) What would I do without this kernel number one and two? We need quite a bit of this. You're gonna need more than that. We're gonna need one tablespoon. All right I seem to have found what looks to be some sort of spice drawer and I imagine this would be an ideal place for the pepper, yes, black pepper. Here it is. I was going to resort to custard powder. But <laughs> here we go. Here we go. There's lots there. Is that grounding that? That's pretty good grounding there. Let's put some more in. Seems like hard work now, but later on, whoa, when we're enjoying the beautiful chicken. All right, here we go. All ground up. Let's put it in one tablespoon. So that's three teaspoons. Nice work. Good work. All right. That's black pepper done. Let's move on to one tablespoon of dried mustard. Here we go, that's easy. Keen as mustard. Woo. Now this is bought new, although I'm sure we had mustard. I grabbed it while we were at the supermarket. So just opening a plastic wrapping on a new mustard. All right, that's the mustard. And what's next? People are sitting at home, no doubt, with pens writing these down <laughs> as we go. <laughs> okay, four... Wow, four tablespoons of paprika. Now, one of the things I read online said that actually this is quite strong and that he regretted putting... Oh, if you heard that noise, that is the downstairs bell for a special guest who's going to taste some of the chicken. My mum, Mrs Hines, she's coming over to taste it. 
big day. Now, if anyone's had a lot of KFC forced upon her over the years, it's certainly <laughs> my mum. She will know the taste. All right, so paprika. This is what we've got to do. We've got to work out how much do we put in. I think we're going to go four. Four tablespoons of paprika. Oh, it says four, but I reckon we go maybe three. So I think we use... I think we're going to use a real tablespoon for this one. Two, three, oh, and a bit. There we go. Nice. Yeah, it smells nice. Nice and smoky, doesn't it? Let's get this rubbish out of here and into the bin so it doesn't end up in the food like it did in one Zinger burger that I had in the mid-90s. <laughs> All right. Two tablespoons of garlic salt. So two tablespoons will mean six teaspoons. It's a bit extra, so maybe just do five and a bit. <gasps> Front door, massive, exciting visitor. See, every now and then she does come to visit me. All right, welcome, Mum. This is a very exciting occasion. It's good to see you. Can you guess what's happening over here? Well, it looks like cooking. Well, well done, yes, thank you, it's cooking. That's good, <laughs> Just, we can't get anything past you, can we? We're in the kitchen with ingredients everywhere. What we're doing, we're cooking something very exciting. See how there's herbs and spices here? Yes. Guess how many there are? I'll tell you, there are 11. What do you know that comes with 11 herbs and spices? A cake. Okay, guess again. Have a look at that red and white striped box that's empty there. <laughs> Let me ask you. Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's right, that's right. We are cooking our own Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? We have stumbled upon the recipe in the Colonel's own hand and having deciphered it a little bit, we are now cooking it for ourselves. So we've got 11 herbs and spices that we've put in there, although I think it's 10 so far, and we've got some chicken over here that is marinating, soaking in buttermilk. I don't know if that's supposed to be for a minute or not, but it's sitting there doing that. That's gonna be pretty yummy. And we're working our way through the herbs and spices with these two assistants here and all this oil. We haven't got to the oil bit yet. We've just done the flour and all the spices and herbs and stuff. All right, we're up to our next ingredient, which is one tablespoon of ground ginger. Now, I would not have imagined that ginger was in KFC. Did you know that ginger was in KFC? Could you taste the ginger? It's so long since I've had KFC, but I can't remember tasting ginger. You're a bit of a ginger expert, though, aren't you? Because you make that fantastic Dutch ginger cake that oh, I love so much. Yes, yes, that's glazed ginger. Yeah, we're not using glazed ginger, that's for sure. That's this is ground right. ginger. Yes, no, that's different. So we're putting in here, uh, what is that? One tablespoon, so that's three of those teaspoons. That's number one. What do you use ground ginger in, Mum? Have you ever used ground ginger in anything? Yes, I think when I used to make the Christmas cake, I used to put ground ginger in. Again with cake, all these, you know, you're very cake-centric. I, I don't think of the ingredients for going with chicken being similar to the ingredients that go with cake, apart from flour, of course. No, no, it's quite different. But there is a little bit of ground in the Christmas cake I used to make. Okay, fair enough. All right, so now we're up to the last ingredient. As I said, this is 12, but this includes the salt. So it's a bit strange, and salt's not that secret. I think we all pretty knew that there was salt in KFC. It's not that much of a secret ingredient, is it? So the last one here is three tablespoons of white pepper. So the white pepper, that's a lot of white pepper. So there it is there. Let's open that up. How are we gonna do that? Oh, it's good. It is a lot of white. a lot of pepper. Isn't it? Three. Three tablespoons. Yep. Good work. The final ingredient. Then we're gonna take a photo of this because I think this is a bit of a special photo. Lemon. I think that's way too much. Pepper. Well, see, this is the difficulty. We don't know whether things are teaspoon or tablespoon. Well, there's a big difference. Well, that, that's exactly right. One's three times as much as the other. But, and this was a point of real contention when people have tried out the recipe. I would not put any more pepper than that in. That... No, I have baby soon. Sorry. All right, all right. Well, it's been tried. Well, hang on, hang on. You can't go messing with the kernels. This is just that's audacious. Pepper. That's your head to eat it. All right. <laughs> 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 is, there, 
Teaspoons. You reckon it's definitely teaspoons? Well, we've gone tablespoons. We'll try teaspoons next time. Teaspoons. <laughs> All right. Tablespoon is TB. Yeah, see? Teaspoon is TS. Maybe we should have made two at the same time and then compared them as we go. We could still we could still do that and do some with one and some with the other. That's a great idea. Brilliant idea. Oh, let's get out another bowl. A third bowl. Third mixing bowl. Not all over again. We're going to do it alongside and be able to compare and contrast. Oh, genius. Genius. We're back with me and Tim now, post-cooking, reflecting. That is a magic moment where your wife says, I think that's way too much. Yes. <laughs> she has a pretty good palate, I'd have to say. Quite quite impressive as a cook and a taste for cooking. But every now and then she's crazy, wrong, totally wrong. It was... <laughs> She did work at McDonald's when she was young and she was a fry girl. Mm. So she's quite proud of her experience as a fry girl. Okay. Mm. I feel like this was the moment where she could stay silent no longer when you put in all that white pepper and she's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that doesn't look right. <laughs> That's right. This is supposed to be a night off for her, right? So, But she keeps hovering around the kitchen. So it's a bit like we yeah. have this dance that goes on whenever I do anything in the kitchen, which is in, it involves me quite confidently saying, all right, you just go over there and just leave me here to do this. That Then about 10 seconds later, me calling out, where's this so-and-so? And then and then her calling out me going, what? And then repeating it, what? Repeat, and then her coming out and then showing me. And I'm like, all right, look, you're cramping the kitchen. Just go away. It's your night off. And so she goes away. <laughs> and that lasts another 20 seconds. And I go, where the heck is this? And then she has to come back. And then So there's this sort of, you know, there's more activity involved in her not cooking and coming back and forward to the kitchen than there is in actually cooking. And then she starts interfering. Yes. Generally to save the day, but, you know, <laughs> in a way that cramps my style. It was interesting that it was the white pepper that got her involved too, because I have read from Sanders family uh, contacts that white pepper was the key, was mm. the secret to KFC, because at the time that KFC emerged, white pepper was quite an exotic and unknown ingredient, and it was the use of white pepper that was the real, ah. you know, X factor. It is quite distinct, and I think if you were going to pick one of the herb and spice to only go with, let's say you're on a desert island, you could only choose to have one and you've got a whole bunch of chicken to fry, I'd go mm. with that one. That's right. Yeah. Really? I think that's quite what distinct. What the hell is celery salt? I, I don't know. But I, was, I, I, was, I felt like a bit of a goose going through the aisle trying to find it, but it's just, again, it looks like salt, but it's... And, you know, you know, there's like a hundred of these things. It's like a massive periodic table of different salts and herbs mm. and spices in the in the in the um, yeah. supermarket. And I just had to. Thankfully, they're in alphabetical order. I wouldn't have found anything. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And who would have thought there was ginger in KFC? Yeah, that was a pleasant surprise for me. But mm. there you go. The colonel was obviously just trying everything, wasn't he? Like he was just. <laughs> he was. Just grabbing stuff. Just Glue. Like, I mean. <laughs> whatever was on special that day at Walgreens or whatever, like, oh, you know. Like. That's right. That's right. He's like, yeah. I'm going to take the 11 cheapest things I can find or whatever's there and I'm going to make something out of it. And what an absolute treat that Mrs. Hine has turned up. How, but you, you, she obviously didn't know what she was walking into. Had you just told her, come over, we have a surprise? Or? Yes, yes. Yeah, we thought it was a big surprise for her. And she was, oh, as you can tell, really excited. But, yeah, we just yeah. ordered her over. Right, come on over now. We need you here now, Mum. It's all happening now. So she had to, like, come yeah. over. And then the whole process just took ages. But, um, <laughs> no, she's good value. If it wasn't going to be Colonel Sanders or my dad who introduced me to, to, to KFC, then then it was good yeah. for Mum to make an appearance. Yeah, no, good. And also, you can't be, you can't be handling ginger without your mum, you know, the ginger ninja. No, that's it, the ginger ninja. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She nice. does love it. All right. Let's get back to work. All right. Top of the list. Here we go again. <laughs> Fantastic. So let's start with two cups of white flour. This is going to be a speed one, okay? Two cups of white flour, two-thirds of a teaspoon of salt, 
etc. Et et Thyme, basil, oregano, celery salt, black pepper, dried mustard, paprika, garlic salt, ground ginger, and white pepper. That should be like a new competition at KFC. You know how they used to have those two all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun at McDonald's? They should do this now. And people come in and they have to say two cups of white flour, salt, one third of a teaspoon of thyme, one, <laughs> one half of a teaspoon of basil. One, and then depending on whether you say teaspoon or tablespoon. I just thought two teaspoons is one dessert spoon. So for a tablespoon, you need four teaspoons. I really think we're disintegrating into a Dr. Seuss story here. So I think we might just leave that, Mum, and take that as a comment. Okay, let's go. Two thirds of a teaspoon of salt. So we now have two different mixing bowls going at once here. All right, we've gone with the pepper first because that was there. That was one teaspoon of black pepper. Now the salt, two thirds of a teaspoon. So maybe put one teaspoon in there, then grind it up and put two thirds of one teaspoon in there. All right, now we need half a teaspoon of thyme. Where's the thyme? Oregano, paprika, celery, thyme. There we go. So two thirds of a teaspoon. Good work. Moving on now, one half a teaspoon of basil, one third of a teaspoon of oregano, one third of a teaspoon. That's not very much, is it? This must be strong stuff. Mm. The other one though, obviously. All right, put it in. Good work, good work. All right, one teaspoon of celery salt. Good work. One teaspoon of black pepper. Oh, we did the black pepper already. One teaspoon of dried mustard. Good work. Four teaspoons of paprika. Mm, let's hope there's enough in there now because we've got so much in the other one. Probably not. Very little, very little, because that's hot. Mm. It's not hot, it's just smoky. Go for it. We'll get it out of the other one. We're running out of paprika here. Just put all that in there. Ooh, there's probably far too much in this other one. So let's steal some from there. It's sitting on the side. This is the sort of experimentation that's involved in cooking. You reckon that's about all right? All right, good stuff. All right, perfect, let's keep moving on. And two teaspoons of garlic salt. Good work. And one teaspoon of ground ginger. Back to the ginger again. Ground ginger. One teaspoon. Good job, nice work. Classy. And three teaspoons of white pepper. So it's still a lot of white pepper. I'm going to hear the chorus commenting at this point, coming, jumping in. Make sure they're level. Oh, I can say pepper. Oh, indeed. It's been reasonably successful. I wouldn't be questioning the Colonel's recipe at this stage. That's true, there's two types of pepper. Can I ask where you found this recipe? Online. I'm afraid I can't confirm that for you. That's secret. No, it's top secret. Yeah, well, I thought it was a top secret, but I'll... All right. Now, there's no cat in it, Mum. <laughs> that was just a rumour. All right, no, so here we go. We've got two mixing bowls. We've got two different amounts here, one based on teaspoons and one based on tablespoons. And we're going to try and cook them both separately and discover which one we think gets closest to the Colonel's recipe. This is very exciting. So what we want to do is mix these together, mix them up, grab a spoon, mix them up. The tablespoon is in the white bowl and the teaspoon is in the green. How can we remember that? Tea green. You want to help, Mum? Yeah, go yeah. for it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, getting in on the action. It's oh, green yeah. yes. I think it's looking pretty good. Yep. That looks the right colour. Okay, well, that's the one you said had too much stuff in it. So if it's the right colour, that's a bit of a problem. Does mine look better then? Well, it's the tasting of it. Well, we don't know the tasting until after it's made, though. That's right. I mean, you could try it now. We've got it. This potentially is an explosive moment. We have two different combinations of 11 herbs and spices, and uh, one is based on using the Colonel's own recipe, interpreting TS as teaspoons, and the other one as tablespoons. We have over here a whole pile of chicken, which is soaking in buttermilk. I think the time has come firstly to do two things. One is put on the oven because we're going to cook some chips as well, some fries. Now, KFC, well, they're not 
fries, are they? They're, they're chips. Normally they would fry them as well, but we've not cut up potatoes for that. So we've just got some chips to go with it. I have also bought some coleslaw as well, and I've bought some sunkist too. So we're going to be enjoying what normally would be the order we get regularly at the Colonel itself. But it's time to put on the vegetable oil and start cooking. So what's coming over to here, I'm going to put in, undo this first oil tanker and pour the oil in. Oh, hello, mum's taken over. Don't spill the oil, mum. Yeah, in there? In there, yep. Say when. Well, I think we'll put probably all of that in there. Wow. I reckon that's a good amount of oil. All right, mum, we're gonna need the other bottle of oil. Miss Colonel number two has got her hands on that one and is gonna be pouring that in. Oh, that's good stuff. Look at the <laughs> saturated fats in that. Uh, I reckon go a little bit more. All right, that'll be enough, that'll be enough. That's it, now put the lids on straight away. There we go, we're gonna put the burner on and drag this oil tanker onto the oil and put the lid on. Should we do the oil with the lid on? Is that dangerous if we take it off or do we leave it off? Okay, we're gonna leave that off. I've got the big, don't be stupid look from my wife that indicates <laughs> I was about to burn the house down. So we're gonna leave that off and that oil is going to burn. Now, mum, you got a comment? Put the fan on. Oh yes, we need the fan on. Put the fan on. All right, now while the fan's going, we're going to turn on the oven. Let's heat up the oven. I don't know why ovens have anything other than 180 degrees, because I think everything's sort of like 180 degrees, isn't it? So we'll put those there, and it's time for us to put the chips in the oven. Let's find the chips. Where are they? Now, Mum, this is going to be a big moment because I've gone against your specific advice growing up. Look at this, Mum. What did you tell me growing up? Oh, never buy McCain's. Never buy McCain's. <laughs> but I've bought McCain's. I've got two bags of chips. Oh, well, there you go. Have you ever bought McCain's? Once. In what year did you buy McCain's? Oh, probably about 80. About yeah. 90. <laughs> 90, because I remember hearing as a kid in the early, you bought it once in 1980. Yeah. And what went wrong? What was the story behind McCain? Well, I, can't in, I can't remember exactly, but I just know... I was dissatisfied with McCain. What was the product though, Mum? Was it a frozen pizza or was it? Mm -mm. I know it wasn't frozen chips because no, it we wasn't never had chips. No, we never had fun McCain. stuff like that in the house. Frozen vegetables. Right. Okay. Well, it serves you. What, what are you doing with frozen vegetables? Why weren't you using proper fresh vegetables from? Mainly, I cook with fresh vegetables. But if I get frozen, I can't remember the name, but I know it's not McCain. Oh, okay, you don't get them now. Well, I, apparently frozen vegetables are good because the goodness is like frozen into them, so that's fine. But they you say just, that, don't they? Yeah, probably there's not a lot of goodness in, <laughs> in these frozen super fries from McCain, but we've gone with McCain's tonight. One of those statements. That's what you taught me, Mum, never buy McCain's. Let's pour the chips out. Would you like to open that up, Mum? The first time, here you are, using McCain's. You got scissors? Oh, this knife. All right. Give it a good tip. Oh, no, 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 they'll come. They'll fall out of there. That's it. Got enough of a dodgy. Well, you'll have to wait. You'll have to wait until the No, 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 no. They're not going in the oil, you see. Because oh, they're these, going they're in the oil. They're frozen chips oh, and okay. fries. So I think they've already been cooked. Oh, they're going oh, in the Haven't they? Is that right? They've already been cooked, so they just need to be. Ready to be cooked in the oven. Yeah. Can they go in the fryer or not? No, they cook better in the oven. Yeah, okay. These are for the oven. Okay. You want the other bag? They can't go on top one another. Spread them out, Mum, nice. Good work with the chips there. This is not the first time you've handled potatoes, is it, Mum? No. Now, should we sprinkle some oil on these or are they okay? They're okay. All right. What do you think about sprinkling some of the KFC seasoning over them? Well, I think you need something that's a contrast to the chicken. So the chips with just ordinary salt would be a nice contrast, I would think. Just normal salt, okay, fair enough, good point. Yep. We don't want them competing against each other. All right, now while we wait for the oil to heat up, I'm gonna get out a couple of grills to put some hand towel down to allow them to 
drip off some of that famous finger licking oil. Okay, got them ready. Things are looking good. The oil's slowly heating up. Okay, so I'm just wondering how to know when the oil's hot enough. Well, to test and see, you just drop a little piece of bread in and that'll be a guide. Oh, do you? Yes. And what will happen to the bread? It will... Well, you'll see. You'll see when you drop it in and I'll be able to tell you whether it's hot enough ready to cook with. So you're not going to tell me what it will do. You're just going to tell me... Well, you'll see and I'll show you when you drop the bread in. Like a little corner of bread like you'd give to a little pigeon? Just a little square. Little... All right, here we go. Here's a piece of bread and it's going in the oil. Yeah, just drop it in. No, it's not ready yet. The oil's not ready yet. Now, how can you tell? I can just tell by looking at it. Like there's not enough movement. There's a little few little tiny bubbles that are happening yeah. around about the bread. Tiny, but not enough. No. Not enough. Okay. All right. So should I take the bread out then, Mum? Yes. All right. All right. We're removing the bread. Tweezers. Yeah. Tweezers. Why would I get tweezers? Well, or tongs. So or you tongs don't burn you burn your finger. I understand. There you go. All right. I've got extracting the bread now. Yeah. There we go. Wait. It's not ready. Yet. Okay. All right, we're getting close now. The oil is warming. We're getting close. The chips are in the oven. Mm. We have this parallel uh, mix of spices on the go now as Tim's questioning his judgment. You can tell I'm part scientist, can't you? I mean, you're, I know yeah. you kind of consider yeah. yourself the scientist of the duo, but yeah. I think you can tell that I've got yeah. a little bit of the yeah. uh, the Bunsen burner and the beaker in me as well. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I loved about this? That your family has this long-running issue with McCain's, the brand. Yeah. Because my family has a long-running issue with McCain's and not eating McCain's. No way. Mine dates back to many, many years ago when I was young and we got a McCain's frozen pizza and the next day all four members of the family got food poisoning. It's the only time I've ever had food poisoning in my life. We all got food poisoning. Now, I'm not saying it was the McCain's pizza. I don't know for sure, but I do know that we blamed the McCain's pizza. Yes. <laughs> and we never, ever, ever got a McCain's pizza again. It became like this forbidden fruit. That's you do not classic. get McCain's pizzas. Oh, wow. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not casting aspersions on McCain's. No, it no. It may not have been them. It was no. a long time ago. These are hazy memories, but I can tell you we don't get McCain's pizzas. There you go. Every time, when I worked at Foodland and we'd be stocking McCain's, even then I'd be saying to myself, never buy McCain's, <laughs> never buy McCain's. <laughs> <laughs> Which is terrible. It's a, it is a ten- anyway. Let's go to our episode sponsor. It's McCain's. It's McCain's. It's. <laughs> I feel like we should. I feel a little guilty after this. They've. It's like they've been um, blamed from something that happened to both of us in the 1980s, which may or may not have anything to do with the truth and their product then yeah. or now. But anyway, I love how we're so diligent about never buy McCain's, and yet we're happy to eat KFC, which we know is terrible for us. Like, it's just <laughs> it's something that's, that's fried in oil and with all sorts of mysterious things, but... All right. So you've got these two pots on the go now with yeah. herbs and spices. Do they look particularly different? I'm imagining the one with the tablespoons looks more colourful. Yes. Yeah. It was a little bit more, I think, brown. But mm. I did I did have to, you know, set it out nicely like, like a science experiment under, you know, test conditions. It's becoming increasingly noticeable how much both your wife and your mum are starting to kind of muscle in and not let you just be the scientist you want to be. They're like, do this, do that, test your oil with the bread. I know, I know. I know now, because I've always had this thing about why chefs are always angry. You know, chefs are always tough and in a bad mood and yelling at people and stuff. That's like a cliche. Hmm. Now I understand, actually, there was <laughs> this particular experience. There's something about being in the oven. Uh, sorry, rather, there's something about being in the kitchen um, that really raises the temperature and, and the, the tension. Well, you know what they say, Tim, if you can't stand the heat, <laughs> get, get out of the kitchen. <laughs> All right. Speaking of which, let's go back to the kitchen. All right. So just explain what you've been doing there. You've been moving some of the oil out of one saucepan yeah, into another. I think another it's just too full. And so you just got to be careful it doesn't bubble over and someone gets burnt because you don't want any oil burns. That would be very bad. Are you saying that there was a potential for our KFC to have too much oil? Yes. Oh, gosh. 
I would have thought we were on the right track if we had too much oil in our KFC chicken, don't you reckon, Mum? I think it might be wise because it does bubble up and splash. Whose side are you on here? And you don't want to get burnt, so... All right, time for bread number two. Oh, you can just tell by looking I at the oil tell. now. You don't yes. even put the bread in. Yeah, I can tell by looking at the oil. You're a true master. Not really. You're really peering deeply into that oil. What can you see put, in there, I'll Mum? I'll put the bread in, but I don't I don't think so. Oh. It's getting close. Oh, well, getting that's looks sizzling to me. It's getting close. Ah, you thought there was nothing happening, but I think it's, it's closer than you thought. Yeah, where are the tongs? To, oh, take the bread out. What do you think about that? Yeah, take that out. It could be. But of course, when you put one piece of chicken in, that'll tell. You just put one in. So what are you going to do now? You're going to roll the chicken. That's right. In the flour. That's exactly right. So we're going to grab a chicken, we're going to roll it in the flour, and we're going to put it in put and it cook in. it. The thing we've got to do now is we've got to make sure that we don't confuse them because we've got the tablespoon mix and we've got the teaspoon mix. So we can't just put them all in to fry together. No, that's right. Unless we do, maybe we do the drumstick with the tablespoon and we do the wings with the teaspoon and then we can pull them out together and we can see how they taste. Okay, that's a good idea. Or we can do a batch of each and just tell. What do you reckon? Now, you'll realise that when you put the chicken, roll it in the flour mixture and put it in, that'll be a lot of cold going into the oil. That's why you've got to have it really hot. So just do one piece of chicken in there to see if it's really hot enough. Oh, because right. the chicken's cold and... Mix is cold. Mix is cold, so... And it's going into the hot. And you don't put too many pieces of chicken in at the one time. You're starting to sound like you've done this before. Well, I have fried chicken. Oh, I've I... fried other things too. Not but... for me, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> when have you been frying chicken without me? All right, let's move this onto the back burner. Finally, I can say that literally. And... Are you going to move that? Onto the back, are you? Yeah, I just think it's safer back there, Mum. Strictly speaking, the back burner doesn't mean you stop doing something, is it? It just means you're moving onto the burner up the back, which means it's just going to be a bit safer. So are you going to turn off the gas on the front when you put the bowl yes. over? Oh, yes. yes. Why would I leave the gas on if there's no saucepan sitting there? Well, that's what I'm saying. We've got to be careful. These handles will be hot, won't they? Bro? All right, let me move this across now. Okay, here we go. Mum, can you hold that? Don't, don't push any buttons. Now you'll need another one on the left hand. I'll press it. We've only got one. It's not very safe. Turn that off. Oh, okay. there is another one. Turn that off. Yep. All right. That one's off. Good. Yeah, that one's on up the back. Now, Mum, are we getting close now? Can we try out a piece of chicken? I'm eager. I want to try out some chicken. Okay. Try one piece. All right. So, All right. Here we go. Here we go. So, are you going to do this one first? The tablespoon first or the teaspoon first? Whatever. What do you... <laughs> Don't be so les unfair about this. This is a massive moment. Go tablespoon first. Yes. Which one do you think? Yeah, this one. Tablespoon, the most flavoursome first. Okay, all right. Yeah, most flavoursome first. first. And, and are we going to do drumstick for that one then? All right. All right, all right. Throw it over. All right. And it's ready to go. Yeah. Ready. All right. Oh, here we go. This is a huge gently, moment. Gently put it in. Oh, oh see how it splashes perfect, everywhere. Perfect. Thank you, Mum. Perfect. You've never said perfect. Oh. All right. Yeah. I think we need to stand well back. There's some spluttering going on. I think now that it's at that heat. Can the recipe say how long or bit? Uh, one person suggested 10 minutes. Are there only small pieces of chicken? Well, let's try it. Let's try it. Yeah, you reckon... Do you think 10 minutes is too long? Well, we've got to You can have multiple pieces in there as long as they don't touch each other. So you can yeah. fit five pieces in. All right. We're just testing, though. How about I put a wing in 
from a teaspoon. And we see we can compare that. All right? Okay. I hope I'm not comparing apples with orange doing like a wing and a drumstick because that one goes in there. The reason why we want more taste ingredients is we want to actually eat some. Yeah, you can put two more in now. But Don't we just want to test them, Mum? Yeah, we're really testing. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. It's golden. Oh, wow. Oh, that's incredible. That looks so beautiful. That looks amazing. Now, how long has that been in there? Well, we haven't been timing. We need to be timing them to get them right. Now, take the oil round that way. Don't take oh, I'm not taking it out yet. Do you think that's done? How do we know if the chicken's done? Oh, look at it. That's real we KFC. Time, actually. Not yet. How, I, I don't know how long it's been. A few minutes. Well, we're, like, we're going to have to get a timer and do this properly. That'll be the next challenge. Whether it's tablespoons or teaspoons is one big thing, but then how long for each one? Oh man, that's amazing. This is really incredible. Hold that, Mum. When you take it out, take it over the away from your spot. We'll just try it, pop it out, and because we're really testing now, aren't we? We are testing now, Mum. That's right. This is like a scientific experiment. Yeah. Of course, the wings, they won't take as long as. The other, like you really, I really think you've done this before, haven't you? It's you really, really all right. Yeah. That's the first one. Well, you want to? How come you get to eat the first one? No, well, I'm not going to eat it. I'm just going to test to see. Have you got a knife? I've got a knife. That's it. Nice. No, I think longer. Longer. Yes. Yeah. The chicken's not cooked. No, it's not. Oh, no, no, it's not cooked, is it? Okay, let's put it back in. Put it back in for a bit longer. All right. So we know that it needs to be longer than that time that we didn't measure just now. Oh, maybe we can... Whoa, what do you reckon? Tastes like oil, doesn't it? We've just picked up a tiny bit. You know how you have those little bits left there? Yeah, well, that's the crumbs on the outside. It's a little bit different, I think. We'll have to see about the other one. How's the wing going? The wing looks a different colour, that's for sure. I think the tablespoon one looks the better yeah. colour. Yes. Yes, yes the much yes. better colour. Yeah. Oh, you agree? Yes. Much better colour. Dark. I think that might be the telling. The teaspoon one is quite pale. Yes. Well, I noticed the flower, it was pale, but this is really so dark. The, it's looking, yeah. from certainly from, from yeah. the visual, Tablespoon yeah. looks like it's the winner. Yeah, it looks yeah. like the real chicken, doesn't it? It does. I know. I know. Yeah. It's, <laughs> oh, the so real fun. Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is exciting. <laughs> Done in the hide hole. Oh, now how's that drumstick going? You want to have another taste there, Mum? Yeah. I think it is the tablespoon. We need to check the chips. Can you have a look at the chips and Ooh. tell me if they're done? We put, okay, we put that drumstick thing in. Let's try the wing. Oh, careful, it's hot, Mum. All right, I'm going to favour the tablespoon because I think the teaspoon's too pale. It's coming out wrong. I think, I think tablespoon is the answer. So it's time to get a whole bunch in. All right, I'm picking out another drumstick. Oh, this is great. Oh, rolling it around. I don't know why I've never worked at KFC. I should have gone and worked at it because it's just exactly what I want to be doing with my time. Let's actually time it this time. That'll be helpful. 10 minutes from now. All right. 10 minutes. There we go. I've got my phone. Sizzle sounds. Mum, I can see you're eating the little bits and pieces there that yeah. you've taken off. What are you? It's <laughs> rum. Yummy. It's you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. The rum. Yummy. The crumbs are yummy. All right. Yep. You heard it first. The spicy certainly did their job. Nice. You're licking your fingers already, Mum. Is it finger licking good? Finger licking good. Oh, no. Awesome. Now, Tim, I can feel the excitement 
from you and your mum as it starts looking like KFC. You're like a couple of little schoolgirls. You're so excited. Like, it is. Both it is. of you. Well, suddenly I felt like I was about to have KFC because it was turning into KFC in front of me. The distinct colour yeah. and the shape. <laughs> it, it was beautiful. And it just yeah. really looked genuine. Well, that moment when you first say, that's beautiful. Like, you sound like someone who's just walked around, like, a cliff face and seen a magnificent waterfall or something. Like, you, it's, you sound like someone who's seen something in nature that has moved you, but it's actually just a piece of chicken frying in oil. Well, it, but it just appeared in our home. Like, I made it. It's just incredible. It's like it, was like, it was like the song, The Man in Black with a Black Cap. It just appeared out of nowhere, and then suddenly it was just this <laughs> majestic, majestic song. Oh, yeah. No, I was genuinely excited. Very exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to see what happens next. All right. We've had a little bit of an emergency. One of the oil, we've got the second pot going and the oil flared up so strongly it's over poured onto the stove. So it's come up like a bit like if you see beer bubbles up enormously and it's filled onto the stove. Thankfully, the stove's collected the oil that's around there, but that's going to be a big job to collect Similar up. Similar to the flood in Victoria. Similar to the flood in Victoria, yes. Mm. Oh, okay, all right. Safety first, kids. Whew. Massive, all right, big moment. Everyone safe? What was I saying earlier? It's open. All right, we're back in business. The kitchen is open again. A couple of knobs we're not going to use. Quite a bit of oil. I think it's time to make the call to abandon the teaspoon option. Look at that. That's not KFC, is it? That's no. Nah. All right, all right. So let's move the chips over here. The chips are done. Brought the chips out of the oven. They look fantastic. Let's get them in the packs. All right, we've made the call. Let's put in the chicken only with the tablespoon stuff. Let's start cooking up all these chips. Would you like me to help? I would, I would, I would. So we want to get the... i got clean hands, so... Put them in there, and you've got to really rummage it in there because... Yeah, this is a bigger one, so it'll take longer. Bigger drumstick? Well, it looks yeah, like pretty much all drum. the other drums. Okay. Bigger than the other one, so this will probably take longer. Now, this is the moment when you're putting the seasoning on the chicken piece. You know when you get a piece of KFC and it's got a lot of skin on it with seasoning, crunchy bits? That's because someone's really taken some care with the seasoning to add it in generously. All right, Mum, go pop that in the oil. Moving on to the next. All right. When you put it in, you put it facing the back and put it in and let it go down the back of the pan and then the oil doesn't splash over your hand. Are you working at KFC, Mum? I really feel like you've got a lot of expertise about all this that you've not led on with before. No, I've never worked at KFC. You haven't? But I've done deep frying other things. Just never occurred to me that people would deep fry anything except Kentucky Fried Chicken. Maybe all this oil will lubricate whatever was not working. Well, I can tell you, this has been a very telling and interesting adventure. Whew. There's more to it than I thought. Isn't that right, Mum? There's more to it. Sure is. Mum's eating a chip at the moment. The chips have come out well. They've been pretty easy. Now, Mum, these are McCain chips. Are you revising your opinion of McCain? What's your thought? I think they've improved them over the years. Since 1980? Yes. yes. <laughs> Fair enough. Unless it's because I'm older and not as particular about my cooking. Oh, right, okay. You're very strict and seem to really know what's going on with the chicken. We're here just waiting for the chicken now. It's cooking. Very careful. It has to be well cooked. I have to say, there's a reason I know why they do those pressure cookers, so we don't have to wait this long. That's right. If I went into the kernel and had to wait this long. I've great. never had a pressure cooker. I've never cooked with a pressure cooker. No, I don't think they're sort of the things you have at home. Are they, I think they sound like the sorts of things commercially you use. Oh, my auntie had one because I can remember it making a big noise. And... I'm starting to think that maybe we might be related to the Sanders family. <laughs> you seem to know a lot about it and you've got relatives with a pressure cooker. Yeah. <laughs> Tim, is this serious? Could there be a possible family connection between the Hines and the Sanders? Certainly sounds that way, doesn't it? Mum was dropping a lot of information. And I think as she's got older, a little bit more of this stuff has slipped out. 
Yeah. She's been able to keep, yeah. <laughs> keep it under wraps, concentrating. But yeah. I think some things are starting to, to, to be told. I sometimes wonder if there could be a link between you and the Sanders family just because you've eaten so much KFC, like, it's gotten into your DNA. Yes. And it's just transferring, like, you've become a family member through DNA alteration or something. I've thought about doing one of those Ancestry.com kind of you know, scans where they scan yeah. your DNA and you get your heritage and so forth. It would be interesting if they say, well, yes, most, most of you is from Europe and there's certainly a lot of Dutch, but by golly, Kentucky's in there too. Have you lived in Kentucky? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very random. In science, it's called gene spicing. Gene spicing, right. So who's this? Uh, and this auntie with the pressure cooker, This she sounds like an interesting lady because real KFC apparently is cooked under pressure. Oh, yes. Which you aren't able to do. Yes. Uh, no. So, Well, I was under pressure, but not the kind of pressure <laughs> that's, that's supposed no. to be. <laughs> I was feeling certainly the pressure. But no, if you look on YouTube, you can actually see the way they fry. That bit's never been a secret. They, You know, they, you put it into mm. a deep fryer and, it's and, you know, it's like a pressure thing that's all closed over. And then they pull it out mm. um, and in all its yeah. glory. But it's, um, you know, we just got it on the stove at our place. And and what about this oil spill? Was it as serious as it sounds? It was scary. Actually, it really was scary for a minute there. Mm. I, I, I had to, it was so scary, I had to step back and still had to take over, as you can tell. This was, <laughs> this was, um, <laughs> it went everywhere. And when you've got oil, of course, oil can just go up. You know, you've got to be so careful. Yeah. So I thought we were going to yeah. lose the chicken. That's how serious I thought it was. Oh. I mean, <laughs> Luckily, you managed to throw one of your daughters between the spill and the chicken to protect the chicken. <laughs> it's, it's like, quick, drink up all the oil before it catches a light. That's what I've got. <laughs> it was genuinely a, a, a concerning moment, yeah. This may be a good time to point out what was a very famous advertising campaign in Australia. I don't know if this was an international way that KFC was advertised. It was certainly a slogan for a long time in Australia. And I particularly remember an ad that was one of the one of the real ads burned into my memory. And this is: is it the herbs and spices or the way it's cooked? Oh, yeah. It was always yes. this. It was like this famous debate: why is KFC so delicious? There was this ad that had a an animated fox and a chicken hawk, and they used to debate about it. And the fox would argue that it was the herbs and spices that made KFC so delicious, and the chicken hawk said, no, it's the way it's cooked. Yeah. Is it the herbs and spices, or is it the way it's cooked? Here's the ad. Have a listen to the ad. Now, you two are recognised as world authorities on chicken, right? Oh, yep, know all about chicken. No, I should say so. Well, tell us, what's your favourite chicken? Kentucky Fried Chicken, nothing tastes like it. That's because of the 11 secret herbs and spices. No, it's because the way it's cooked. Herbs and spices. The way it's cooked. Well, there you have it. Even the experts can't agree. Kentucky Fried Chicken. If it isn't the herbs and spices, it must be the way it's cooked. And I remember that ad very, very well. 1986, apparently, is the year that ad was played. But Do you know my memory of memory. my initial memory of that ad was that I always thought it wasn't cooked, it was cut. No, it's cooked the way it's cooked! <laughs> so I always thought there was something in the ad where at the same time that was said, a piece of chicken was sort of cut or something. And, and I remember no, thinking, right. is it the way... What do you mean in the way it's cut? Our KFC is not cut. So is it the herbs and spices or the way it's cut? And it must have been the accent, but... That's no. again something I've carried for a long time, but I know it's cooked. Mm. Anyway, we'll come. We'll come back. We'll come back to the way KFC's cut in a second because I found something interesting out about that. But having done the process now, Tim, without spoiling what's coming next, mm. where do you stand on the herbs and spices versus the way it's cooked? What is the secret of KFC? I think it it is the herbs and spices because you can get a sense of. I think it's the taste. Yeah, I mean, you can. I've had fried chicken from a bunch of places. I've had fried chicken in the southern part of America, but it's mm. with it's the herbs and spices. That's what does it in in that particular skin and the way it is. The taste is just phenomenal, and yeah, I, I mean, I mean, you can. I, I haven't tried it with the pressure cooker, I guess, at home. But but the herbs and spices, you could get just a you know a hint, a glimpse of something there that I think is means that it's the it's the real key. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. I think it's the herbs and spices. Speaking of cutting, though, I was reading Wikipedia uh, earlier, trying to find out a bit more about KFC, and I found this interesting about the way that the chicken is cut. Let me read this. The product is typically available in either two- or three-piece individual servings or in family-sized cardboard bucket, typically holding between six and 16 pieces. In territories that follow 
the system handed down by Colonel Sanders, such as Canada and the UK, each chicken is divided into nine different cuts. Mm. Two drumsticks, two thighs, two wings, two breast pieces, and one keel. I didn't even know the keel was a thing. Uh, however, in the United States, they now use an eight-piece cut. Oh. So nine cuts is, is the normal, but you do get an eight-piece cut. Just a little bit more on each piece or on two particular breasts are slightly bigger, perhaps? Or? I guess so. I guess you would, yeah. Yeah, you'd have to get a little bit more chicken on average. What's your favourite piece? Is there a favourite piece you have? Yeah, I like the uh, drumstick. And I think I like the drumstick because it's easy to eat. It's got a higher skin to chicken ratio and the skin's what KFC is about for me. Mm. It's just a cleaner eat. It's just a nicer eat. Yeah. Certainly it's where I start every time. I start with the drumstick. Mm. That's the first one. Mm. Um, and then you move into some of the more substantial pieces. There's no way I'm not going to go and get KFC at some stage today or tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to do it now. Oh, dear. I never order just pieces of chicken, though. I've never do- I haven't done that in a few years, so I'm going to get some chicken. Yeah, nice. Go for it, man. On my behalf, vicariously. Can I share with you an observation? I've gone to KFC a few times in the last couple of months, mainly because inspired by you, and I've sat and, and eaten in the restaurants. Hmm. And I've noticed something about KFC you don't notice at other takeaway restaurants, and that is the number of older people that come and eat at KFC, like old couples, like with no grandkids or kids, just like you'll just see two old people turn up. Oh, yeah. And like, I'm not against old people going into restaurants, you know, good, good, lovely, but it's just not somewhere I would have expected to see old people go, but they do. And I always thought of your parents as like, you know... Mm. At the older end of the spectrum in my life. And they loved KFC too. Mm. Is there something about KFC that pulls the older audience? Well, it is closer to sort of a more conventional meal than, Mm. you know, a burger and fries, right? At Macca's or something Mm. like that. That really does feel like kids' food or young person's food, you know. But there is something about, you know, well, it's a chicken. It's a piece of chicken. So it's a bit of a substitute to a real meal. So maybe they feel a little Mm. bit more justified doing it. Or Mm. it could be because it tastes friggin' amazing. Like, (laughs) maybe that's the other reason as well. Um, But but it's a strong taste. So older people probably. Yes. Yeah. That's my theory. I think it's a strong taste. And older people whose taste buds are going need that extra Mm. something. And I think KFC delivers. Pack some punch. And the Maccas, it can end up being a bit bland. It's a bit nothing yeah. food, yeah. Whereas yeah. The, the, yeah. the lovely taste, the spices and the chicken, you, you, know, you, you yeah. do sit there and have it a bit more as a meal rather than one hand on the reel. And In much the same way that when you're on a plane, you need to have, like, spicier food or, like, you know, drinks that have got a bit more kick to them, like a Bloody Mary, because your, your taste buds aren't working so well on a plane. You know, old people are permanently on a plane. <laughs> so uh, that's right. they need the, they need the KFC and and and, and spicy ginger cakes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, perhaps that is right. Yeah, you do get it, and maybe they're just they're just their their taste buds are more refined as well. So that they're mm. refined. Okay. They drink fine wine and nice strong brie and and you know KFC, and <laughs> it's all just part of. Uh, <laughs> The banquet that we grow into in our more mature years. There's another idea I have on that as well. You know how the image associated with McDonald's is like Ronald McDonald, a clown, and like it's all about Mm. kids. But the yeah. the character of KFC is an old man, you know, so maybe yeah. they just, it's a yeah. deliberate appealing or it's just marketing like, oh, I want to be like that lovely old man and I'll go and eat his yeah. food, or you may, know. Or may, maybe like for older women, he's just a complete sex symbol. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Mac is getting Brad Pitt to say, hey, come and have some yeah. chips and, <laughs> and a burger. Yeah. 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 It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's like this lovely old All right. man. Oh, dear. All right. Let's back to the kitchen for the final time. All right. We're still passing the time here. Just waiting for this friggin' chicken to cook. I don't know why the first one was done. So, oh, they're starting to brown now nicely. Yeah, okay. All right. Now I'm starting to be paranoid. Maybe the other one with the teaspoon, just wasn't cooked long enough and that's why it hadn't gone brown yet. Oh dear. Oh, this is very confusing. 
Well, while we're waiting on the chicken to cook, we've been hoeing into these chips, which no one claimed were going to be close to KFC chips, but I have to say, McCain's, they're fine. They're just nothing on KFC chips. I don't know what KFC put on them. They must put some sort of beautiful salt on there. Maybe that's the real secret ingredient, actually. What 11 herbs and spices are they putting on their chips? Because those chips are great. These chips are pretty ordinary. Yesterday at Marion's shopping centre, one of the daughters had KFC chips and I was observing how they're making them as I was waiting. And when the chips came out of the oil, they shook the basket and then they tipped them into the tray. Mm. And then the lady had one, which what I assume was salt. Mm -hmm. And she did a few shakes of one salt shaker. And then she did from bigger salt shaker, and it, it wasn't like white, it was a different color, really big shakes of a different substance and then whoosh the chips around and scoop them in. So there were two different ingredients that they shook in. Oh, okay. Well, that doesn't really tell us anything, does it? Except there was definitely seasoning on them, which we knew already because they're not plain potatoes. I think one would be salt and one would be a special seasoning, which is what the flavour is. Yes, but special seasoning isn't a product I can buy on the shelf. I don't know what's in the special. The entire enterprise tonight has been about trying to unpack exactly what special seasoning is in the chicken. Now we've got to start again with the chips. Oh, well, that's just the joy of life, the mystery. I remember saying to Jerry, My dad. We used to buy Kentucky Fried Chicken. Coleslaw, their coleslaw, is some of the best I've ever tasted that I've bought. Really? Yeah, I remember. We really did enjoy their coleslaw. I, I enjoy their coleslaw because too. Because some places you get coleslaw and there's big junks of cabbage, and but theirs is so nice and fine, see? It is really, really great. It's, yeah, the best. Is it? Yeah. You heard it first here, folks. Coleslaw at KFC gets a massive, massive thumbs up here from <laughs> my mum, Mrs Hyde. No two ways about it. In fact, she's reaching for some more. Although I have to say, mum's not quite catching on to the fact that this stuff isn't from KFC. It's from the supermarket. But mum's enjoying it and hoeing down and appreciating it. You can it. put some more in here. All right, we've reached the moment. The chicken is looking good. It's brown, it's coming out. Another piece. There we go. This is nice, all right. Fantastic. Oh, look at this. Oh, that is, that is KFC. That is awesome. That is awesome. I'm gonna get a little bowl and put some coleslaw. And I'll tell you one thing we've overlooked from this whole endeavor. We haven't got any wipes. That was a <laughs> one thing we definitely needed. I've spent half the time washing my hands. All right, putting coleslaw. That looks amazing. All right, Mum, well, we've come to the big moment. Are you ready to taste some? Yes. All righty. There's one there for you. Thank you. And the whole family's got them. Got, whoa, nice. And you've gone for drumstick and we've got a wing. All right, nice. Drumstick. Mum, have a bite. See if we can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you might want to move in closer to the table, I think, there, Mum. Just oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, um, finger licking good. Smile, Mum. Can I get some other? What do you think? Pretty good. Yeah, it's all right. All right, well, right. Do you think it tastes like KFC? Yeah, but it's no Wicked Wings. Oh. I think it tastes really good, but I wouldn't say that it tastes like KFC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's come over to the wife who's the real chef in the house. You can tell because she's using a knife and fork to eat her KFC chicken. It's very flavoursome, but there is too much pepper. Too much pepper? Yeah. Well, there we go. That's it from the Hein household. Mm. Tim, I'm still not completely clear on where you landed on the taste. Did you, how close did you get? Not close enough. I didn't feel guilty that I'd had KFC, that's for sure. Yeah. I got really excited early on when I tasted a little crummy piece, you know, 
And I thought, wow, mm. I've really hit upon something here. But when it came to the actual chicken, I mm. knew I'd missed the mark. I, I'd fallen short. Yeah. So part of me felt a bit relieved that I hadn't sort of plagiarised someone else. It's like if you wrote a great song and then someone says, hang on, that's a Paul McCartney song. And you go, oh, no. And then you check it out and you go, oh, phew, it's not a Paul McCartney song. Even though it'd be flattering yeah. to think I wrote a Paul McCartney song. You, I didn't. And so I felt a bit relieved. I'd created something else, which is my own recipe for chicken, which is, <laughs> which is TFC. T- that's right. It's the same as KFC, except sort of badly put together. You know, that's, that's, yeah. that's my entire strategy. But, and you know, like, as, as my wife said, she thought it was just fantastic chicken. She thought it was better than KFC. So that's, that's, I mean, I've, clearly she's wrong, but yeah. she also has joined in the fast this year. So it's been a long time. I think she's just forgotten, but, um, Okay. It was a bit of a compliment, and certainly the meal was eaten by everyone who was present. Any sort of takeaways, things you would have done differently? or uh, I would have bought a pressure cooker. That, that would have made a yep. difference. I, what else would I have done differently? I'd have been a bit more careful with the oil, which is partly might be why they use a pressure cooker, because then it's sort of not open in the open air. But, of course, then they use the open yeah. air for chips and stuff like that. I would have probably taken less than three and a half hours to actually, you know, do the whole cooking stuff it was certainly <laughs> wearying towards the end and not it, it really... wasn't fast food no it wasn't it wasn't um, yeah. but maybe that's all the time that's taken with the chicken before we arrive at kfc on our behalf it's just carefully and sloppily prepared over hours and hours and hours right up to the moment we pull up at the drive through i noticed in the pictures that you had gotten your hands on kfc packaging like boxes and stuff like that to put the chicken in yeah was that just to sort of create the uh the the appropriate visual stimuli yeah i thought that would be fun so i did go into a kfc i had to go you know which i haven't done all year but i did go up and i just say look i'm just here for the packaging and um the girl behind the counter was lovely and just gave me you know one of everything and i took that home so it did feel strange to be in kfc and definitely to walk out having not ordered any but I, but with I, a box, but yeah, with a yeah, box, with a yeah. Box. And I was on the, oh, <laughs> I was on a friend's motorbike too, so I actually had to take that stuff and sort of stuff it under my shirt, so it looked all sort of secretive and stuff what I was doing, and <laughs> <laughs> drive home with it under my shirt and then turn up at home and pull it out. That was pretty funny. Yeah. Do you think you'll ever do it again? Look, if I'm honest, yes. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I think I might try it again. Well, now that I know, yeah. now I know that it's not going to taste like KFC. I'm probably allowed to have it every day. Like, surely, yeah. surely it doesn't count. So here we go. This is a wonderful substitute. Apparently, uh, KFC have since added MSG to their recipe too, which you didn't have in yours, which also probably made some difference. Now, now I need to know what is MSG. I know it's not good for you, but it's it's yeah, what is it's a type- monosodium glutamate? It's is it- a flavor uh, enhancer? I think. Okay, I, I'm imagining like a black goo like a soy saucy sort of thing but i am i thought it was a white powder but i don't know what msg looks like that's a good question let's see if i can see what it looks like it's like a sort of a white crystalline material apart from madison square garden of course as well it's a sodium salt of glutamic acid it's found naturally in some foods it's used as a flavor enhancer it intensifies the meaty savory flavor of food isn't that what they took out of aerosol cans because of the hole in the ozone layer? No, that's CFCs. That's oh, yeah, that's right. Fluorocarbons. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a bit disturbed. It was MSG in our spray cans. <laughs> well, why would KFC be adding that to their chicken at this stage? Surely the environmental pressure would be too grand for them. They just, they just, they just wanted to be as bad as they could. They wanted to make it as mean and bad as they could. What if they found out that KFC was causing, you know, holes in the ozone layer? It was breaking down the ozone because the flavors were so strong. <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly causing a slight expansion in uh, Tim's trousers. <laughs> Were you inspired by the telling? Were you inspired to make your own? Because I know you're, you're much better than me in the kitchen these days. You're quite a handy cook. I've started getting in the kitchen a bit more in the last couple of years. But no, I wasn't inspired. I wasn't inspired by listening to you. It sort of put me off a bit. Right. right. <laughs> but it has made me want to go to KFC. <laughs> well, if that's all I've done, my, my job is done. Kentucky Fried Chicken. If it isn't the herbs and spices, it must be the way it's cooked.